Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine. Actually, I'm getting a, I'm getting a, a late start. It's already 11 o'clock, and it's 110 degrees right now. The heat index, but that don't make any difference. Why? Because this is a blessed day, and we're going to catch fish with live bait and they're going to be deep a lot of the fish are deep right now the surface temperature is hot it's at 89 degrees right now on top that's hot for this part of the country now my favorite net size is 3 8 it'll catch most small, well small bait and big bait but i do have half inch mash but when it comes to little bitty bait this net right here, in my opinion, is a great one to add to your arsenal. It's a must for catching small bait. All right, folks, I'm going right down through here. I have caught some bait here before in the past. It's been a long time. But uh, I'm looking for bait right now. I have my blue blockers on. I can, I can see real good with these. Get a lot of questions about these. These are from Walmart. And they're called polar optics. If you wear prescriptions, they'll they'll fit right over your prescriptions. Unless your unless your head's shaped funny. Bursel's got a funny shaped head. Now he wears prescriptions, but you know, I've bought him a pair of these last year and they wouldn't fit over his head. His head's too big. But I like these because they block out all the sun and you can really see see down in the water now I'm looking for shad whether it be uh, small gizzard shad little ones not over two inches long I'm looking for shiners or threadfin shad e either three of those is exactly what we want all right there's some right there Ooh, that net casts real good. Now, I threw right over that bait. Now, I know I got them. But what they are, I don't know. Yeah, I got them. We'll see right here. I hope they're not too big. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to put them in there. I threw over some good shiners right here, folks. They're not very big. Uh, three and a half inches long, but I'm still gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna put them in there. Oh my. There's the kind of bait we want right there. That wasn't a good cast. I got too excited, but that's the kind of bait we want right there. Of course, I want the other too, but this is what I had in mind. That's it right there, folks. Y'all see them right there? That's it. That's what I want. Let's dump it in the bucket right here. We got plenty. And then some. What I'm going to do right here is dip out. I don't know. A couple dozen of these. Right here. We'll just sort of let them jump off in there. I don't want none of that trash in there. But that's the size right there. Perfect. And these are uh, thread fin shad. They're baby thread fins. Alright folks, let's get up here and see what we can do. They are generating a little bit of water. As y'all can see, there's some current coming coming around this column right here i'm now sitting in 28 feet of water all right so here's our equipment i'm gonna fish real light this is a six and a half foot sow belly rod it's an ultra light rod with two pound test high vis vicious mono onto a 1000 size dial reel but the way i have it rigged is I have a two gram weight, a little bitty, little old 
bitty swivel. Can y'all see that? And both of those on either side of the swivel is tied with a Palomar knot. Six pound test fluorocarbon leader, about a foot long, with a size eight Gamagatsu hook. And that's a snail knot. And that's it. The only adjustment that I may have to make is I may have to put on a heavier weight because I didn't think they'd be generating this kind. Of, I mean, it's pretty swift out here. So let's just go ahead and put us one of these minters on here. Okay, if I can catch one, they're quick. They stay alive in this doggone extreme bait tank. I mean, this hot water, it don't make any difference. Yeah, I keep getting questions. I'm going to go ahead and answer it about how much salt do I put in a tank. Well, this extreme bait tank that I have is a 12-gallon tank. And I put about a handful, a big handful. All right, there he is. I got him hooked. Both lips right up through the bottom. Let's get up here and see what we got. I'm going to get right in behind this column where the eddy is. We're going to adjust your drag. I mean, we're fishing with sewing thread right here. And I'm going to drop it straight down. I'm going to let it down to probably around 12 foot. We'll start around 12 feet. Now remember, I'm in 20, 28 feet of water. Hey, this rod's so sensitive, I could feel that little, little minter moving and moving quick. He was definitely running after, running. There he is, let's see what we got. And I knew it. They are here. That's my target species. Okay. Let's flip him in. Black crappie. In the heat of the summer. Quit, quit. Quit. Quit, quit. <laughs> quit. And there he is. See where he's hooked? Can y'all see that? Right there. That's a good deal. What I do, when they hit, when I'm catching fish on live bait, folks, that's a little bitty crappie. Um, what I do is I won't let them run very long at all. Three or four seconds, and I go ahead and I set the hook. Let's let him go. Okay. He'll get his air bladder working, and there he goes. Shot off like a bullet. I'm not out to eat them today, folks. I'm just out here to have fun. We have plenty of fish. Plenty of fish in the freezer. So let's get us another minner. Quit. Doggone things are fast. Look how fast they are, folks. The, the reason why they're outrunning me is because I'm looking for the smaller, smaller minners for the crappie. I like them anywhere between two, not over two and a half inches long. That one right there is pushing it, but that's a good size for a crappie. He's probably two and a half inches long. But you can see how active he is even in this hot hot water. That's what you want. All right, let's drop it back down there on their head. I know how deep they are. They're 12 feet deep. 12 to 13 feet deep. Actually, they're around 14. There's fish. Y'all see that? Now, this ain't no crappie. I guarantee you. Now, this, this ain't no crappie. Golly, bum. I didn't want to do this. Not with this two-pound line, but what we'll do <laughs> is wear him down. Now, the only knot that's going to be stressed the, the way I have it rigged, and you're right, it's going to be the two pound line on the top side of the swivel. So I might, what I'm saying is I'll probably uh, go right ahead oh, and retie that two pound line, but I don't have to worry about the six because it didn't get stressed out. My drag's so light 
is adjusted for two pound line. So looky here. They come here, you pretty bass. Look at there. Oh my goodness. Look at there. That's a chunk. He's so pretty, I'm gonna show him to y'all. Nah, no, let's just let him go. See, I just barely got him hooked right there. Three to four seconds. There's some crappie sitting there, but as long as there's bass in the area, we're going to have to thin these bass out before those crappie have time to, uh, to bite, folks. So I'm going to get back over there. Let's let this pretty fish go. Beautiful largemouth. There he goes. That was a lot of fun. See, the only knot that got stressed out, this is my main line right here, is the two pound line. Right here is the one that got stressed out. Get off of there, that knot there. So I'm gonna retie it real quick and then we'll pull back up there. I'm not gonna take a chance. If I were to hook another bass, uh, two, two and a half pounds, I might get popped off. All right, let's put another one on. I've retied my knot. Didn't take just a second. New York second. Let's go ahead. Hook him up. Right there. Get him back out. I just hope that these bass, see they're sitting in there with those crappie. I just hope that they'll give these crappie time, <laughs> time enough to, to eat. Bass are a lot quicker, they're a lot more energetic. A crappie is a lazy fish. I'm having to put this bait right at the perfect depth uh, to catch these fish. See, I know that six, there's 12. When I reel it to right there, that's 12 feet. So I'm fishing above them just a little bit. There he is. Now there's a big crappie. We got us a big crappie. I recognize the head shakes. This is a big, big crappie. Got to be. Yep. Look at there, what a fish. A monster crappie whoa I mean a monster crappie this ain't no little bitty one right here I want y'all to look that's what I'm talking about right there that is what I am talking about let's get back here and net him I thorned him good so I'm not worried about him coming off look at him he's still fighting but that fish give me a fit. And y'all are fixing to see why right here in a second. Golly, what a crappie. They say giant crappie don't bite in the summer. You know what? I ain't figured out who they are because they say a lot. What I'm going to do is put this big old crappie. Now, this is a slab. Golly, what a fish. All right, folks. That is a monster, monster crappie right there. That is a big, big crappie. I want y'all to know that's a fact. Look there, what a mouth. Look how thick and girthy. That fish right there is over two pounds. Uh, probably, I'm going to say 15 and 3 quarter, 16 inches long, that's a big one. It's a misconception. They say that the big crappie, well, can't be caught in the summer. Uh, I've heard a lot of they say, who are they? Do y'all know they? Well, All right, folks, let's let him go. That's a giant fish right there. Giant fish. Get him back in there. He'll get his deal going right here and he'll go like the wind blows.
There he goes. Water is very, very hot, folks. There he is. Now there's the size I want right there. That dude right there is about two and a half inches long. And we're just gonna hook him through both lips, coming up through the bottom and up like that. And we're gonna put him back in here. All right, let's get on back up here. Unless he gets that bait right back in the same spot, which we're right there in the same spot right now. He nipped at it, he nipped at that shad, whatever it was. Huh, let's get him back down there. Those fish could have went a little bit deeper. I'm going to go around 16 feet deep and try it because, I mean, it's hot. I believe they've went a little bit deeper. Yeah, there he is. There he is, too. They sunk down just a little bit. A little bit. Wow. This is a lot of fun on this little light stuff. This is a crappie. I can tell by the way he's pulling. He's not as big as that last one, but he's a doggone good fish. I want y'all to look right here. Look here. Here he comes. That's a good crappie. I mean a good one. And the reason, oh yeah, the reason I'm using this size 8 hook, folks, is because it's so hot, and I'm wanting a, just a small and as light of a hook as I can use uh, to to uh, keep, keep the bait alive. Let's just stick him right here. That's a big crappie. That's another big crappie. See there, folks, I just barely got it. Barely got him. That's a big crappie right there. That crappie there is uh, close to probably 14 inches long. And uh, let's go ahead and let him go, and then we'll talk about it. All right, he's biting my finger. There he goes. When it comes to hot water fish, whether I'm fishing for bass or crappie, and if I'm using live bait, I'm going to downsize to the smallest hook that I possibly can. I will catch far more fish that way. A little size 8 hook like that will hold a big crappie, as y'all have seen, without any trouble. Providing you got a limber rod. But the deal with the little hook is, we're using little bitty fractious bait. That bait needs to swim, it needs to swim freely and look frisky, alive. The, the crappie will hit baits that are almost dead, and sometimes they'll be dead on your hook and they'll hit them. If there's enough movement in your rod tip to give them the bite, that's a fact. But for the best results, you need a lively bait, and that's why I use a light, small hook. These fish is getting deeper. They're, they're going a little bit deeper. But uh, when that happens, crappie, now that's not nothing unusual. It don't matter what time of the year. They'll go deep. They'll come up shallow. They'll, they, they change um, depths throughout the day. That's just a crappie. They're hard to keep up with oftentimes. But, but you can. A lot of times when they get, see, I'm plucking them out of this school. They get a little bit skittish, and that's when they'll go deeper, and that's what's happening right here. So I'm just getting that bait right in front of their face and going deeper with them. You know, they've already moved down about five feet deeper than what they were. So I'm just, I'm doing that. I'm just going, I'm going on down there with them. There's a bait. There we go. There we go. I knowed it. I knowed it. I knowed it. This is a good one, too. This is a real good one. Y'all see how that fish is cutting up? This is a big crappie. I found some more. 
and I stuck with the depth that I was catching them in. Folks, that's a, that is a great thing to do when it comes to crappie fishing is realize how deep those fish are. Big old summertime crappie fish right here now. Oh my, 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 my. I cannot tell y'all how that fish faulted. It's a good one. And I'm glad I got under the shade. I, the old man was burning up. That's a little bit too much for me. Golly, what a crappie fish. That's a big one. That is a doggone big crappie fish. Oh, it's too hot to put out that kind of a drillagen, but I can't help it. If I were to pass out right now, well, that's just, that's just life. That's a big fish. That is a big doggone fish. Now, let's let him go. I'm glad there's some in the shade. <laughs> Go on back, feller. There he is. Already I got another one. That quick. That didn't take long at all. Let me unloosen this dead gun. Let me loosen it up. This is a good one. Another good fish. No, he ain't that big. There's a bass behind him. Or something was behind him. I believe I can flip this one in. Come on in here. That's the smallest one I believe I've caught. And he's 10 inches. 10, 10 and a half inches. Let's let him go. That was quick. That fish was right there now. There he goes. Well, folks, that's going to be about the end of it. I tell you what, that was a blessing. A lot of fun. Once I found how deep the crappie were, well, it was like taking candy from a baby. Live bait fishing, well, is no doubt second to none. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for everything y'all do for this channel. It's greatly appreciated. Love each and every one of y'all. Oh, it's hot out here. It's miserable hot, but it's a blessing for it to even be hot because it's supposed to. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. 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 Hey, man. Whoa. 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 Whoa.